Welcome back, everyone, to theCUBE coverage here. Kicking off day zero of AWS reInvent, four days of CUBE wall-to-wall -wall coverage. I'm the host of theCUBE, Dave Vellante's here, the whole crew's here. Giovanni's in the house, Senior Vice President, Strategic Alliance at Kindrel Company. We've been covering since it kind of spun out of IBM. I think it might have been, it was a divestiture, was it spun, I forget what it was, but it's no longer part of IBM, but it was IBM's consulting like arm. It was like the brains of IBM. Sure. Was yeah, like a spin out or it was a spin off. Spin off. Spin -off. So yes. First of all, thank you very much for having me. It's great <laughs> to be here. Yes, we spun out of IBM. We became an independent company. It was November of 2021. So, Giovanni, you're in charge of all the alliances for Kindrel, which is a big job. I thought you were just doing hyperscales. My bad. Global strategic alliances in a cloud era that's now distributed computing. Yeah. Every single corner of the tech industry, cloud, on prem, edge in cars, in devices, computer vision, multimodal data is going to be a big part of the business transformation we're living in. And you got to touch all those partners and you're helping yeah. create the solutions. So, I mean, what do you do every so, day? So, no, no, let, let me, let me, kind of, <laughs> first of all, let me take one minute. I mean, obviously, really, take a minute what you, you, you alluded to, yeah. we're a services business. Yeah. So we run the mission critical system the, the entire world relies on. I mean, we run the IT system and our operation for uh, the largest airline, the banking system, the largest manufacturer, just to name, I mean, uh, four of the top five airlines run their systems, uh, six out of the top 10 banks, uh, three out of the top five uh, telco companies, eight out of the top 10 manufacturers. So we're really managing the mission critical system and we've been doing it for decades. I mean, uh, the average relationship we have with the clients is more than 10 years and we're very sticky because we run definitely the mission critical aspect. Yeah. As I mentioned, we spun out of IBM. We were the global technology services known at that time. And in November 2021, we became an independent company. And becoming an independent company gave us an opportunity of really creating relationship with company we did not have access to when we were a, a services business captive in a product company. And indeed, within a matter of not even months uh, of being independent, we strike the first alliances. Mm -hmm. And we initially focused, obviously, on the hyperscales. And yeah. the alliances with AWS was back in uh, February of 2022, and since then, obviously, we've been building. Why? Obviously, for us, was an opportunity. We obviously manage this mission critical system for yeah. uh, this company, and these companies, the, our customer wants to continue on the digital transformation, move to the cloud, and they were looking for us as someone that they entrusted to run their mission critical system for long, to really take them to the new world yeah. and really take them into kind of like. A, more of the future and adopting the new technology. So doing it with the alliances was a natural thing for us. And the ecosystem is changing because it's a heterogeneous world we're living in right now. Yes. It reminds me of the 90s, that's come up a lot. This year in the queue, I've heard that quote at least a dozen times now from different people. I feel like I'm in the 90s, because at that time, open systems came in, you had um, new developer, open source started to start to take root, and then innovation happened and then we've been living in a digital transformation world since then so since the 90s it's been decades and then last year was the, the last decade was the decade of digital transformation but it seems now giovanni we are in an ai accelerated business model transformation as well as technology digital it's, which is like super interesting if you do what you do yeah. because you're now got sure i mean there, there are a couple of aspects that i can think about it i mean ai is definitely the top priority for everybody yeah. but we definitely see a lot of customer reaching out to us and saying i know i have to do it but help me out and one of the aspects is really goes back to the data and the foundation data that we've been managing for them i mean we have been managing some of their system yeah. of records and the question is how do you take this system of records and make them system of insights really extract the data that is still very highly fragmented in silos yeah. and maybe uh, push it into a cloud data warehouse that is kind of like more analytics prone and then feed models out of that in order to extract the insights that really want uh, yeah. drive better business decision. You have all these customers, again, you mentioned some amazing stats, eight out of 10 top this, the three of top three, two of three at this company. Um, I, they have huge technology estates. And I have to ask you the question because right now, uh, in our uh, work we did with both Uber and J.P. Morgan Chase, two different kinds of companies. Uber obviously built from the ground up, major innovation, digital twins, you name it, they're doing cool things. J.P. Morgan Chase, regulated industry, they're a big bank, probably on your list of one of those companies. Yep. Um, but both have different profiles and huge data and, and, and technology estates. But their intellectual property is on premise. Yes. They, and they, they don't want to just 
they need their own open AI. Like they want to have their own data, but they're regulated. So they can't just like snap their fingers. So you, you deal with these large companies that have a lot of horsepower opportunity with the data. How, how are they doing it? Are there blockers? Are there requirements? Are you seeing the... Um, well, I think we have to understand that we live in truly a hybrid world. And I do believe that hybrid world will see it to stay for quite some mm -hmm. time. That some of the system that runs and are efficient and effective to run on-prem will remain on-prem. And the issue is how do you extract the data to feed it into a system that needs to be more on, on the cloud yeah. and are more prone to the cloud and really take advantage of, in a sense, both worlds. And how do you seamlessly yeah. integrate that? It's part of the challenge, I would yeah. say. Um, a lot of the company, I mean, some of the company that you mentioned, the highly regulated, obviously, we yeah. deal with a lot of these highly regulated industry. Uh, we have the experience and the expertise to do it, but really it's about the balance and how you do it effectively and efficiently in order to infuse the new while continuing to operate the existing. You can't just turn it okay. off. I mean, yeah. you alluded to companies that are more young and new, they can start off from the ground zero and yeah. take the... Build like, they built their own commerce store database. Exactly, <laughs> and, and it comes there. But some of these others, I mean, they still need to continue to operate. And part of the challenge in the modernization is how do you man, ma modernize while maintaining the system running. The analogy is how do you change yeah. the engine of a plane while the plane is still in the air. Matt Garman told me on my interview, I published this on the story, that there's a lot more momentum to the cloud now than ever. People are interested. What's your take on that? You have a great relationship with AWS. Yes. As well as a lot of the hyperscalers. Cloud um, repatriation, which Dave Vellante was, he's adamant on the cube pod. That's, that's not true. It's, yeah, there's some cost savings, but this net new growth is coming into the market. So, yeah, people are moving stuff on-prem for certain reasons, but it's not like the anti-cloud growth. So, yeah, cloud I, continues I, I, to grow. I don't think there's, I, I'm, I'm on the camp that there's not an anti-cloud kind of, I don't see kind of this pendulum swinging completely. I think there is an opportunity of both. I, I, I really believe in an hybrid mm -hmm. kind of like approach. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, and as I said before, some workloads will have reasons to be on-prem and they can easily work there, but some others and a lot of growth will continue to be on the cloud. Uh, some of the extraction, I mean, you alluded the uh, interview that uh, that you did with Matt, talk about the mainframe. I mean, yeah. how the mainframe, very effective, works perfectly, but how do you extract all of the data and use the data and the yeah. system of records that are there and feed it into a cloud data warehouse to run analytics yeah. on top? How do you balance that one? I think that's really the key to success. Talk about the dynamic, because you're bringing up something that's like in the old model of computer, selling computer wares to companies, you would have to have end of life and the new thing comes in. I mean, you're talking about a system that's working, mainframe. There's other systems out there. Are you seeing a lot more preservation of stuff that just works and abstracting away with better systems around it? Or is there a general still feeling that uh, some stuff ages out but not as fast? Or Because obsolescence used to be speeds and feeds, but not, if a mainframe's cranking out their job, they can offload and be accelerated by AI. I mean, right? Sure. No, I, th I think I think we have to the mainframe a, 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 what we call a very balanced approach. that is on, with, and off. So there are some stuff that will move off the mainframe. I think it's think time, and yeah. some that will remain on, and some that will modernize with. And so there is in not many even the studies that we have done and the research that yeah. we've done. We see the customer oh, taking this sort of like equal balance approach, depending on really what they have to do. And I think the rule of the game is both cost efficiency mm -hmm. and really the effectiveness of what you can do and try to find the right balance. What's your strategy for your alliance? Obviously, I mean, Kindle, you already have all the big customers. Do you need more customers? I mean, uh, obviously you have all the big ones. So are you building a relationships to serve the customer? Is the alliance more about getting more capabilities? Are you expanding your, what, so, what's your alliance strategy? It's, 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 a good, it's a good point. Obviously, alliance, it's the strategy of the company is predicated on what we call the three A's, and yeah. one A stands for alliances. The other one is advanced delivery and account focus. So to a certain degree, you can say that one of the growth engine, it's really what we can do through alliances. Mm -hmm. And this is in two folds. One is with the ex our existing customer base, which I mentioned before. It's a very healthy and existing customer base where we have focused majority of our interest for the first few years of our spin. And it's really bringing them new technology and we really see them seeing a renewed trust in us because now we are unbounded, as I said before, we can create this relationship and bring them the technology that best fits their needs. Yeah. At the same time, with the alliances, we can continue to grow, not only in, within our state, but we have added also new customers since yeah. we had new logos, since we started being an independent company. 
So, so Alliance so for us is really key in what we do, and not just the episcaler, but the ecosystem that yeah, revolves get that around. Yeah, the they have a huge ecosystem here. Yes, they have, and this is one of the reasons why we we focus primarily and initially on the three episcalers, and obviously AWS being one of them. It's because the access that we get to the ecosystem, yeah. and what our customers are asking us is really to help them integrate all these various technology and seamlessly work with their legacy system that are still up and running and functioning. Mm -hmm. So that's really part of our essential strategy. Now, we focus on, uh, I mean, I, I focus on global strategic alliances and we focus on a, what I would call a small, relatively small, highly selective number of parties. Yeah. We tend to focus on those companies that have those technology that our customers are looking for yeah. and they're making the difference. I just, you've heard from, um, before you were on, you might heard VM was, VMware Broadcom was here. They're partnered with Amazon. I had Tanuja Randery on. She's the EMEA VP of Managing Director uh, for AWS, where Sovereign Cloud is big. So that's a strategy you have to kind of get your arms around because you know you got data rights and you have global economy. That's again another big t task for multinational corporations. Yeah, no, no. Look, I mean, there's there's definitely an evolving environment uh, around us that we continuously have to play, and our customers are looking for us for that level of expertise and trust in guiding them in what is the right solution and the right decision for them given their their current estate and where they want to go. Um, for the folks that are that are seeing the trust with Kindrel now that you guys are independent, uh, allows you to be heterogeneous with solutions. Yes. You don't have to be aligned with one yes, thing. Correct. Say yes. um, which IBM is actually doing really well with Watson X and they're getting, they're, they're getting kind of their groove back. But outside of that, you guys are independent, so you have to be a trusted advisor. Yes. What's What are some of the things you're seeing with customers right now in terms of adoption? Are they buying the big AI factories? Uh, where are they on the progress bar of on-prem, cloud, edge? Are they fully distributed computing environments today, or are they still progressing? How would you measure the progress of of the adoption of AI in these large companies. Uh, well, still kicking the tires, experimenting? I think there's still a fair amount of experimentation and, 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 and testing. I think there are some uh, leading company that have probably more sophisticated and mature, uh, not just in the model, but in their deployment of their models and how they, yeah. they embed their model in their day-to-day -day operation. Uh, we see a lot of customers coming to us and really asking for help in, not just with the data, but also in understanding how to infuse this AI and generic capability in my mission critical workloads and really take it the way that they operate their mm -hmm. business to the next level. Uh, I think every company, every client that sort of we engage with yeah. are all in a different phase. And then obviously yeah. we deal also with highly regulated industries. So there is that component that obviously yeah. plays into the role in, in, in what's uh, what can be done, what what's yeah. going to be next. Uh, but overall, obviously, it's a continuously evolving environment and customer are looking for us for that level of expertise that is, in a sense, unbiased, that, yeah. is, that is really catered to what they're trying to achieve in their current situation. What are their biggest outcomes they're looking for right now, just to get beachhead and AI, get, get their platforms kind of well, modernized? Well, I do believe that everybody recognizes that the data is still one of the key elements mm -hmm. uh, that defines the ROI yeah. around. I mean, uh, we've always said data is the new oil, I mean, all yeah. these things we've been talking for quite some time. But it's becoming more clear that to succeed in AI, you really have a good data foundation, a data platform that effectively works and pulls data from all the various sources, take yeah. advantage of, and then also it's optimized in a way that doesn't feed yeah. all the petabytes because otherwise you'll yeah. create models that will never stop training, will never be operational. So really, how do you find that right balance and optimization? Yeah. So Giovanni, you're here at, at reInvent, yes. so you do Global Alliance. What's your message to partners? What are you guys looking for in alliances, what are you guys looking to achieve? Give a quick plug for Kindrel in terms of your relationship that you're looking to either expand, foster, create well, new. With, with, with AWS in particular, obviously, we're, ecosystem. We're, we're, foca we're focusing first and foremost, there are four major areas where we work with AWS, I would say. Uh, one is AI, generative AI. The other one is around security. We're one of the uh, uh, launch partner for uh, the AWS Security Lake. Uh, SAP is another key element, and SAP is one of the, our other partners. We are a, an SAP RISE yeah. implementation partner, and moving a lot of the SAP workloads, some of the most mission-critical yeah. kind of like workloads around there, it's critical to the cloud to take advantage of RISE, some of it on, on AWS. Yeah. So it's that kind of like combination, then obviously the mainframe. So with these three kind of like four areas is where we focus primarily with AWS. 
and our ecosystem of partner around those ones. So company like Rubric, yeah. for example, around the security aspect, the key, key element yeah. company. So resiliency is huge right resiliency. now. Resilience. Yes, exactly. Not just the prevention and the yeah. cybersecurity, but also the resiliency <laughs> of what happens <laughs> and how do you can yeah. get, get back up on your feet quickly. The number one conversation that no one has an answer to, what's resilience mean in Gen AI? Uh, we're working on it because it's still evolving. I mean, it's still resilience yeah. is, you know, it's, it's something that's a concern. It's everyone's worried about it. Well, I, I mean, I didn't roll back from a prompt injection. I just redo everything. I, mean, I it, guess. I mean, resilience. I mean, in in all our, our aspect of security and resiliency, we actually consider the these two practices together because yeah, we I see so. the entire end to end, and the, we believe you mean security and resilience as, as one. As what I agree with. That's because a great call. the ability of doing both the prevention aspect, but also yeah, being ready to what you need to do. Be recovered. It, yeah. When it happened, when the event, the yeah. occurred. Happened. Yeah. And so how do you recover? Quickly, I do. Back. So really this end-to-end -end approach, it's yeah. really what different. And data's core and all that. I mean, that, that's a good strategy, actually. I think that's consistent with what I'm seeing. People look at not as a backup and recovery. It's like security. Correct. Well, you guys got a lot going on. I got to say, um, I can't believe it's been that many years. It seems like yesterday that Kindle was, that the spin, the spin yeah. out. Tears and going, going strong. And, uh, Very happy about it. <laughs> I've always been impressed with the people in Kindle because you are working with the biggest customers. You have some of the smartest people in the industry. And it's like, it's a it's cool up and down the stack. Infrastructure is cool, down to the chip level. And then every layer of the stack, there's innovation, there's business value acceleration. It's and, just, it's amazing. And, and indeed, we have, I mean, we mentioned about ecosystem, we have alliances with chip makers like NVIDIA. Yeah. And then infrastructure coming kind of in the cloud, hardware. Yeah. And then so all the way yeah. through the application like an SAP. So we just follow the stack. Yeah, the we go to GTC, we went to supercomputing, we go to KubeCon, <laughs> we go to you know, sure, yeah, no. <laughs> just, just follow the crowd. You know, um, it's funny, it's it's Kube, KubeCon, we were there when it was, was started, present creation. AWS is our twelfth year here and watching Amazon go from being misunderstood, which Andy Jassy was fine with. He's like, Hey, leaders have to be misunderstood for a long time if you're doing something compelling. Um, finally everyone figured this out in twenty sixteen. So oh, <laughs> look at there, there it's happening. Uh, they've just been on a, just a growth, and it's just, it seems now more than ever this whole back to the basics because we're in a whole nother shift, secular trend. Mm -hmm. So it's the same kind of movie, but different kind of actors. It's going faster, large scale, data, productivity, cost reduction, yeah, top line you, growth. You can see, you can see you can, from I do believe there is, there's a speed that is significantly yeah. faster than probably what we have seen, and we'll continue to probably to continue to accelerate. Yeah. yeah. It's like forward. sports announcers watching some soccer on TV, European football, as they say. And I'm Italian, so the, you can call it the right way. Call it football. <laughs> okay, yeah. the, the beautiful game. Uh, the announcers were like, um, the pace of play is really fast. And, and it reminded me of the, of the cloud now. The pace of play in business today is fast. And speed is critical. Yeah, and, and the, the, it's also critical how these systems have become essential for everything that yeah. we do on a day-to-day -day basis and the, there is an expectation of performance that is in doubt even from a consumer aspect me as an individual <laughs> i expect my app to function and, yeah. and there, but there's an entire system where's the behind. answer i want no one no one says i want a slower answer <laughs> correct i love that insights uh turning data into insights again it's a tried and true formula do it fast do it, reduce the steps it takes make it yes. easy those are that's a uh evergreen business model well I think it's it's a key differentiator. I mean, people have recognized they have all this data available, and the the aspect is how do you're going to take advantage of that one in an efficient and effective way. We do it ourselves also. As we operate and we provide services to our customer, like with Kindle Bridge, for example. G Giovanni, thank you so much for coming on the cube. No, really uh, we'll have thank you back you on. Me. Certainly, you're in New York, right? Yes, I mean. So New York. we'll see you at our NYSE studio. We'd love to have you uh, come in. Oh, it'll be great. Thank uh, you. Yes. When we have our digital twin events, great to have you on. Appreciate it. Nice thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you. Really okay. appreciate it. Thank you. We are wrapping up day zero, which is one of the four days of Cube coverage. Got a couple more to end out, and then we're going to go to. To the keynote, which is Peter DeSantis, this is the infrastructure keynote. So we get to see inside the inside the ropes and see what the speeds and the feeds are going. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante here in the Cube. We'll be right back.